Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Art 195, 3D Modeling for Animation for the Spring Semester 2022. Um, we have a little bit more to cover today with regard to um, the reboot character. Um, we've modeled it, we brought it into layout, we've refined the surfaces, and we put it in a background. So we created um, uh, which one call it? it is um I can't think. Here, let me go to the background here and we'll see. We look at backdrop, a composite, yeah, a composite background. Okay. And then I adjusted the sun a little bit so that it softened the shadow just a tad. Um, not a lot, but a little bit. <clears throat> um, there is a great at the very end, I will show you there's a great uh um, it, you know, you're not going to probably choose this background for your, your project. So if you choose another one, you want to try to match him to the perspective. There is um, another, uh, there's a video that I have on my uh, light wave, not for this class, but my general light wave playlist. So you know, that should be able to help you too if it gets a little bit challenging or difficult. But usually for this guy, you don't need to do that. You just need to ballpark it and make it look right. It's not that complex. So uh, the last step, what do we need to do? We need to now render it. Now, there are a variety of options that you have. Um, if you have taken Chris's class, you're going to want to save it as a an animation, okay? But we have a single frame, so that's very, very different. Um, you'll probably want to do some test renderings to check to make sure that everything is working and then it looks good. So I'm going to show you the settings for that and then for the final one. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, get going here. So what I recommend that you do first, let me move this out of the way. There we go is you select cameras and go to camera properties. Okay. Now, right now, the focal length, I'm using a perspective camera. You may also want to try instead, um, yeah, just use the, um, just use the perspective camera. You could also use a real camera, a real lens camera, but um, I think for right now, perspective camera should work just fine. Um, also the default focal length is 24 millimeters. You can leave that or you can play with it to see what it actually does and what it looks like. So for example, if I switch from VPR to um, wireframe or just texture shaded solid, just so I can see the perspective and that sort of thing. I can play with the camera light there. Notice that it moves it farther away, brings it closer by changing the focal length. But I'm gonna leave it at the default 24 millimeters. And for you, you should probably start at that as well. When you begin, um, in do, begin your test renderings, what I recommend that you do is that you switch to maybe 640 by 480, okay? Now, in my case, notice it's not gonna get everything in here, but that's okay. I just wanna see what it looks like when it's rendered. And then what I can also do down here, okay, we wanna make sure that the resolution is set at 640 by 480 as a test render. We want to, um, the multiplier, leave it at 100%. If on your computer it takes too long, then use 50% and you'll get a much smaller image, but it will be a good um, indicator of what the final is going to look like. I'm gonna leave mine at 100% right now. Don't need to use any field rendering. Notice down here under constraint, we have width and height 640 by 480. You can always change those settings to match um, the image that you're using. I'm going to leave the defaults right now, just for the heck of it, but I suggest that you guys play with that. Always leave the aspect ratio at one. Okay. Um, the next thing, when you're doing a test render, 
the minimum samples and maximum samples, leave them at one and eight. Um, you may get some jaggies, you may get some artifacts, things that um, don't look all that great, but that's okay. You just wanna get a general appearance of what's going on here. Leave the threshold at 0.01, leave the filter radius at 0.5. Since we're not using any motion or stereo or depth of field, okay? We don't need to do those. But if you do choose to do the depth of field, then that would be one of the areas that you would um, consider. For the first project, I don't recommend that you use it, okay? But I will cover that later this semester. It can really enhance the overall, overall appearance and um, quality of your final rendering and make it look real, okay? Okie doke. So that's what I'm gonna do there. So that's the camera properties. The next thing that you need to do is go under render and then under the render tab, what we want to do is we want to go to render properties down here, right under options. Okay, so under general, leave the start frame at zero unless you've moved it. And the end frame, it doesn't matter because we're doing a single frame uh, rendering. That's it. Okay. Um, it has review 1280 by 720. That's okay. Render display, image viewer, leave that. Preview pass. I like leaving that on, although it does slow the render town, uh, time down a little bit. Um, limited region, we're going to say off. Um, overlay, off. And now we go to the next one, the render. And this is where we have lots and lots of settings here. I'm going to leave, and I always leave them here by default. You can always, if you need to, um, by changing the settings and increasing the numeric values, it will probably um, increase your render time, and it can re increase it considerably. Okay. If you have a lot of reflections, you know, instead of one sample, maybe you want three. If you have transparency and you have refraction in the glass you may want to change it again from one sample to two or three. If you're working with skin and that sort of thing and you have subsurface scattering, or maybe you're working with a car and you have a really um, nice um, finished paint job on it, you want to maybe add um, again, a few subsurface scatterings. But for right now, we're gonna leave most of these the same, okay? The only thing that I want to do here is uh, I'm going to say enable the spike here. And where it says noise filter, I'm also going to turn it on to get rid of any kind of artifacts or noise. The next thing that we'll do is we're going to go to global illumination. Okay. For right now, we're going to use brute force. And if you want to enable a secondary you can, but it will, again, it will add render time to it. What you probably will want to do, I'm going to go ahead and render this with a single ray of, um, and see what it looks like. You probably will probably want to crank this up to 10 or 12 rays to make sure that it works. If you're using volumetrics, as we did with the table and lamp, you're probably going to want to make sure that it is turned on. You don't want to use legacy but you'll just leave it. You'll leave the number of samples at 16 is fine. The indirect intensity, 100%. And um, we're all good to go. If you were working with fog or um, use the volumetric scattering, you could also do that. But for this project, I don't believe we'll be using any of that. So enable volumetrics, I'm gonna turn it off. But anytime you use lights, and you have volumetric lighting, you wanna leave that turned on. We're not using any buffers right now, but later we will. Um, in particular, for depth of field, that I will show you how to do that on another day. And then the output, we'll leave this alone. We don't need this. And the same would be if we wanted to um, have a depth of field, we would wanna make sure that the output um, includes our buffer for that. Okay, 
So we're re ready to do a test render and to see what it looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead here. And again, we're gonna render frame, not render scene. So I'm gonna select render frame. And it took just a couple of seconds, okay? Last render time, 2.1 seconds. Not long at all, that's nice. And this is the finished product here. Not very big, is it? And that's at 100%, but it's looking the way I like it. It's, it's coming out okay. I'm content with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide this for the time being. I'm gonna go back under camera properties and I'm gonna change the settings. What I would like all of you to do for your final rendering is pick 1024 by 768, okay? And also, wait a minute, there we go. No, I'm sorry, I'm gonna use HDTV 1280 by 720. There we go, that's the one that I want, okay? And then for your final rendering, instead of 100% multiplier, go all the way up to 200%. Now this is gonna all add considerable time. So we're gonna probably have to wait a few minutes for this thing to render. And then the next step is going to be, we're gonna add minimum and maximum samples. I'm gonna do the minimum at eight and I'm gonna do the maximum at 12. So if there are any artifacts, it will get rid of those. So that's for the camera settings. That's what I recommend for your final rendering. Then we're gonna go back under render properties. We're gonna bring that back up and then we're gonna to go to global illumination and I'm gonna crank the rays up to maybe 10. You may need more, you may need less, we'll see. And now to see what this looks like with VPR turned on, We'll go back so I can get a pretty good indication of what the final rendering is going to look like. And now I'm gonna go ahead and again, I'm gonna select um, render frame. And we're gonna sit back and wait a couple of minutes to see how this looks. It's actually running pretty quickly because I have one simple object and then I have a single light, but um, when you start to add multiple lights, when you start to add buffers, when you start to um, increase the size of it, um, increase the number of rays and all that sort of thing, um, it will add considerable render time. Now for any one of the, you know, I'm working on a laptop and for any one of the, um, the renderings that I have done for my personal gallery, my virtual gallery, um, what it is, is it will, can take anywhere from 10 hours to 15 hours or more to render the final scene because I have over a hundred lights. Um, could probably get by with fewer, but I wanted to try to simulate a real gallery using real, um, lighting. Um, that was my goal to get as close to something that looks real as possible. It doesn't look real, but close to it. And you can see that it's going through the motions. Now it's slowed way down and it's only, um, you know, 22%. So it's going to take a, a little, a few minutes to render, but when it's done, you'll see that the final size is considerably larger. And um, the quality should be tip top. Shouldn't have any artifacts. Shouldn't have any speckles or anything in it that, um, you would need to get rid of. Now, if you're so inclined, if there's something in here that you don't like that you want to um, fix, then that um, isn't necessarily um, uh, an issue, but in you know Photoshop, you can always bring your final rendering into um, uh, Photoshop and you can do some minor retouching, okay? Now, one of the things that I might do with him as I said, I like how he's coming out, but I might, in fact, even enlarge him a little bit so that maybe his head comes up to here and I move him over just a tad. But right now, this is, I'm satisfied with what I'm seeing. So when that's another thing to consider. 
if you recall the other day, one of the things that I mentioned to turn your reboot character a little bit, almost at a 45 degree angle, and that will emphasize the 3D quality of it. For those of you who've had, for example, a 2D or a, a drawing class, um, you'll notice that if you draw from a frontal view or a profile, um, it tends to look kind of flat. But if you draw, for example, a, a simple cube from a three quarter view or maybe a three fifths view, um, it looks much more three dimensional. So that instead of just seeing maybe one or two sides, you see three sides. Okay, so that's what I'm encouraging you to do that rather than leave it just flat and straight frontal view, you know, uh, looking at us straight forward to, um, to rotate it a little. The other thing is um, we want to make sure that the, the um, reboot character is showcased. So don't make him small, make him large. You can, there is no specific size. Um, that we have determined, you know, he what he is. So go ahead and make him as big as is necessary to to really cover up um, or to, to fill the space, you know, adequately. Now, given this situation, um, you know, he needs to be on dry land, so to speak, and I want to be able to see the shadow. Um, then I think this is an appropriate size. Um, could make them even a little bit bigger. And, but then we'd have to maybe adjust the lighting so that the shadow is shorter or um, so that it all rests on this sandbar. You can see that the rendering just finished and it took three minutes, 59 seconds. So as soon as that's done, and this is um, allows us to see the rendering in progress. As I said, if you leave that on, it will take the rendering a little bit large, longer to, to, to complete. But um, I like viewing it in, process, in progress because if I don't like what I see, I will cancel it. What I want to do now, though, since it is 100% complete, is I'm going to abort it. And you'll see the finished rendering back here. Now, if I click and I drag this out, you'll see that I have the whole you know, rendering completed. Okay, a nice big rendering of this. And it's looking pretty good. The next thing that I want you to do, and then this is what you're going to turn in, is that you will save it as a JPEG and or a Photoshop file. You will not turn in the light wave object or the light wave scene file, just the finished rendering. And to do that, we go up to file, and you'll see over here to the right under um, Deluxe R um, RLA, all the way down, there are all these different file types that you can save in um, Lightwave. I want you to use down here, JPEG or Photoshop. Photoshop is directly, where are we here? Here's the JPEG, here's the Photoshop file. Next. Photoshop is down here. You can just use 24 bit, but I'm going to stick with JPEG for the time being. And for your own sake, where you should save this is in the image folder of your content folder. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going back here and I'm going to go back to images and here's our reboot. Or let me go back to desktop, make sure that it's, I'm saving it in the right place. And I'm gonna go into my content folder. So I don't have one for 2022 yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and here's the one for content fall 2021. And you'll notice that I have an object folder, a scene folder, and an image folder in here. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and in the image folder, this is where I'll save it. And then when you're done, Make sure that you name it and I'll call, call it Reboot Final Demo Rendering Spring 2022. And that's where I'll save it. So once you've saved it, the next step will be for you 
excuse me, you to upload it to our shared Google Drive folder. Now, if you want to email me um, to let me know that you finished it and that it's been placed there, that would be great. So I'll know to look really quick and I can get the grade back to you as quickly as possible. Okay. Are there any questions so far? No. No questions? If you would like to speak or if you want to um, put something in the chat, chat, let me know and we can um, finish this up. Is there anything that you want me to review regarding creating a composite using, using the shadow catcher so that the plane that he's standing on is not visible, but his shadow is? That's kind of important. Um, do you recall where I told you where I placed the images for his eyes to use the, a projection map, a planar projection map on to this screen? Okay. And then we have the presets that I'm using for gold and for chrome, and also to add reflective properties in there. Um, under, uh, we change those settings. So, and that was done with the object itself when we went to um, the surface editor. And if I were to select, for example, Let's look at the Chrome here. There's the Chrome. This is a preset, but in order for this to reflect not only what it uh, is in, uh, the, in the reboot character, but in the background as well using that, you switch to shading model and then under reflection, okay? I'm gonna want glossy reflections and this is where you um, add the image that you plan on using. You do not have to use the sandbar that I did. You can place them on the moon or in space or wherever you want. But then under reflection options, by default, it's just set to ray trace. So make sure that you change that to ray trace and spherical map. What it does is it takes that image that I've chosen for the background and it places it on them the interior of kind of like a bubble so that it um, uses that as an artificial environment to um, use for the reflections. And if you want, because the, the gold is kind of soft, we could probably add that as well. And if you cranked up the reflective properties for his boots, you could do that as, as well. And then if you recall too, for the ground plane, if I put in here under ground, oops, Let's go ground. There we go. Again, under shading model, what I wanted to do is make sure that I selected under shading model here, we use shadow catcher so that we don't see the plane, we just see um, the shadow that's cast. So there's lots of settings to consider. And when we get into more complex lighting situations, um, it gets even a little bit more complex. And if you wish later on to add depth of field um, and to match the perspective, that gets even more complicated. So we have all these settings to take into consideration. And um, I suggest that you play with them a little bit. Make sure that you tinker with the lighting a little. Um, it's also um, useful, something I didn't talk about, but let me go ahead and hide the final rendering. And I'm gonna play with the shadow real quick. And what I can do is if I go back to, instead of VPR, I'm gonna go back to texture, let's te texture shaded solid. Now I don't see the shadow, but I see how he's lighted. So what I can do with my single light is I can come down here. And instead of the camera, uh, I want to select um, lights. And right now I only have that one light that I'm using. I mean, we do have the environmental light, but we have the light, which is a, um, a distant light. And remember, you really don't have to move the light for a distant light. 
Um, what I want to do is I want to just with um, Y set to rotate, I can go ahead and under the heading, as I move that back and forth, see how you know the majority of them is in shadow or I can change the direction of it. Like so I can also change the pitch. So let's undo that, undo that. And let's go back to VPR and see how long it takes to redraw this when I change the heading. We'll just change the heading, but you'll notice it will change the direction of the, um, the shadow. So instead of 45 degrees, let me put it at 30 degrees. You know, if that works for you, then that's fine. If um, I recommend um, like rotating him at a 45 degrees, that um, you have your shadows at at least a 30 degree angle and maybe a 45 degree, but right, you know, not to the side or the front, unless if you're the image that you're placing them in, and that's how you're creating your composite, if it, um, you know, you're going to look for the light source and that image. And this one, it's kind of hard to tell. You know, it's kind of even lighting, so I can pick whatever light source I want. I mean, that's done deliberately so I can have success. But if the light is behind him, um, then the shadows are going to be cast forward and he's, go he's going to be in, um, in shadow. And that's not going to look that great. So what you may want to do in that instance is add a second light or a fill light that would be in front of him so that you still have the cast shadow in the front, but you have a fill light and it could be a point light. It could be, um, would be good. And then it will fill, fill in some of the, the darkness and that would work well for you. So that changes, you know, that if I change again from pitch from 35 to, um, I'm gonna change it to 60 just for the heck of it. See what happens. So now the, the light source is coming more from the top and you can see how the shadow cast is really short. So again, because there aren't any shadows in this photograph, um, I can pretty much do what I want. But look at the objects in the photograph that you're going to create a composite. And you can just download pretty much any large image from the internet. Um, you know, do a Google search and whatever looks good to you, place them in there um, to look at the shadows of the objects that are in that photograph and try to match them as closely as you can. So if he's in a room and he's surrounded by toys and stuff, what do the shadows look like of those toys? And try to match the direction, um, try to match the length of the shadow and how crisp is the shadow. You can also change the color of the shadow if you want under the light properties. So that would be something that you might consider too. Okay, that's all I have to say for today. Um, remember that um, on Monday is a holiday, it's President's Day, so we will not meet. Wednesday, I'm going to start a new series of um, lectures or demonstrations on surfacing techniques. Um, show you how to use, again, projection maps. Um, later on the semester, we'll get to UV maps. Um, in, in addition to the projection maps we'll be using to affect transparency, translucency, um, bumps, and so on and so forth. Um, be able to project images accurately um, onto your models. Okay, so if there aren't any questions, we're going to um, call it quits for today. No questions? No? Okay, well then, that's it for today. You guys are, oh, no, all good? Okay, that's good to hear.
Well, get out then. Well, I'm going to say goodbye. And um, you guys have a good weekend. And I will see you a week from today. Okay, and we're going to start a new series. And you should be wrapping up the reboot character. And um, oh, just to let you know, before too many of you leave, um, start thinking about what kind of toy you want to build um, for your next assignment. Pick something simple, and I mean really simple, like a toy, uh, 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 infant's wooden train or something like that. Um, if you want to do something complex like a, um, a robot with lots of rivets and detail and stuff, save that for your final project. Pick something really simple. Okay. Very, very simple. And it's best if you pick something kind of organic too. There are a couple of good examples on my website. But we can talk about that more um, next Wednesday. I just want to make sure that everybody's on board with this and finishing up and um, has all the base, you have all the basic and the foundation down for moving forward with Lightwave. And if any of you are watching and you're on Blender, um, you should be finishing up the donut assignment. And then um, you're going to add the cup. And that will be equivalent to our toy. And then you're going to pick a final project, just like um, the folks working in Lightweight. Okay, no. So I'm going to stop the render, the stop the recording. Um, I'm going to say goodbye. And um, everybody have a good weekend, a good President's Day. Okay. If you need any help, um, be sure to um, email me and I can set up an individual um, webinar, a one-on-one, -on -one, help you out with any um, issues that you may run into. Or at least, you know, I'll find a video and point you in the right direction or something. Okay, so that's it. Bye-bye.